That's right, you're in the right place at the right time on the moral compass. Listen, we've got HBO, Netflix, BET fame, comedian Shang, yes, Savage Forbes. He's in the yes. house today, y'all. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, one, I want to say blessings to everybody. Hope everybody's hanging in there because this has been a really a test of, of your, your strength. So hope you're hanging in there. Hope that you're healthy and safe. And I hope that you you washed your butt because that's very important. <laughs> we were just talking about that. It's very important. You can be. We don't want you. We want you to be healthy, but smell good. Can't, <laughs> can't be stinky. So I, I didn't know I, he could preach either. He can preach, y'all. Yo, you sorry. You know you don't want me going there. Woo! I, I didn't know he could preach now. He can preach now. Because Pass God, the basketball. God told me when I uh -huh. got on in there, he said, well, he said, well, uh -huh. I got well back. And he uh -huh. said, oh, to look, Shane, before you do anything in your life. Yeah. Wow. And I said to him, I said, God, yeah. I'm going to wash my butt. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? <laughs> so, no, no, I mean, no, I, I, I think that, um, you know what's weird? I did. I. I. This is before the pandemic. Yeah. I. I've done uh, church shows. Uh huh. But of all comics, Lunell. Lunell is comedian. Lunell is funny, man. She's funny, but we and and when they saw us walk in to do the church show, because uh, I used to do the gospel brunch at. <laughs> the, uh, no, I'm serious. It was at the House of Blues. They would do a Sunday show. They would have two comics, and then they would have people in the choir. Uh -huh. And everybody would see me on the show and go, how did you get on that show? I said, well, one, I'm a work in progress. <laughs> Two, you know, I, I mean, like when I was younger, if I stepped into a church, I probably would have caught on the fire. I would have caught a person in flames. And I, even the, the, the Lord would have been like, uh, what are you doing here? Why are you in here? You know, but I know how to do it. I, I mean, it's it's uh, I, I've done a, a bunch of shows. Uh, they used to do it at a place called BB Kings in New okay. York. Okay, yeah, BB Kings. It was called BB Kings in New York City, right in Manhattan, um, right in the center of Manhattan, Times Square. And they used to have those shows, and we would do uh, like four shows. It would be sold out. Wow. And uh, my angle was the hypocrisy of religious people that yeah. don't realize everybody has to walk in your own path and faith. And and not, and I mean not just faith, but just walk in your how do I put it at your pace. Yeah, everybody don't get there at the same time. Thank you. Thank. That, yeah, that's bro. Listen, I, when the Lord called me to preach, I'm gonna tell you right now. I know He was joking. <laughs> we were bad too. Now we were bad too. And and you know I had a teacher. I'll make you laugh real quick before we hit the promo. I had a teacher, and one day she saw me in the parking lot at at, at the grocery store. And she said, hey, baby, how you doing? I said, fine, how you doing? She said, hey, what you doing now? She was scared to ask me. She said, you ain't served no time. I said, no, ma'am, I've been in ministry for like the last 15 years. She's about to have the Holy Ghost in the parking lot. I Hold my <laughs> buggy, hold my mule. She jumping around that buggy, man. But yeah, you know, um, I think that's, I agree with you wholeheartedly on that, you know, especially from being in the church. And I'll tell you, that we run a lot of good people away because you expect people to come in there and be, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Day one, man. Right. You I know, think and, and, and it's not going to happen like that. Right. Um, there's a that didn't happen like that. Life, Jen J Life Jenkins, or Jennings. Have you ever heard Life Jennings? Yeah. 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 And, and he had a song about how the people in the church were judging him for coming in with jeans and t shirts and Timberland boots. And the thing is, it's because that's all he had. He didn't have a suit or, or nice yeah. clothes. And yeah. I think that you can't judge people that way. You got to wait, see what they're about, see what's going on. And then if they do some crazy stuff, then you can go, well, yeah, you're kind of nutty. But before that, you got to let them, you know, they're coming there to get healed. That's like yeah. make all the sick people for, and like, look at you with your sick self. Come on. Yeah. Yeah, what, so what, what your clothes got to do with your soul anyway? Your clothes oh. ain't got nothing to do with your soul. Bro, uh, I, go, hey. I like to go to church. Listen, I go to church. I'll pass the cool. Pastor named Reverend Tolliver. We go to, I go to church in my short pants. And, and, and um, I go to church in my Dallas Cowboy jersey. 
Not to say the cowboy jersey is such a good choice lately these days because lately know, these days I've been I know crying a lot like a country sound. My team never wins. Yeah, I've been crying a lot, you know. But uh, yeah, I, I, I do have the cowboy the jersey. The Cowboys. Yeah, don't tear the cowboys up too. No, bad. no, you gotta admit they they yeah. they, they they pretty bad. Um, yeah. <laughs> come on now. <laughs> Hey, they 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 start they start off real good. You think, oh, they and then something <laughs> happened. They they it's like something distracts them. Like, oh, squirrel. And they just, <laughs> they just, <laughs> yeah, that's what it is with them. We gonna play this promo video. Oh, you can't, can't you play that promo. My promo video. You can't play that. <laughs> and you, not from the special. Oh, your promo. Oh, you. Oh, no, no. I made a promo video for you. Oh, well, then, then we're good. I got a little bit of talent. You want a yeah. little bit of talent? Okay, I know you do. I'm just saying, I didn't want you don't want to play my, my special. So <laughs> it ain't. I talk, in fact, I talk about religion in my special. <laughs> right, I really do. Yeah, check it out. We got Shang the Savage Forbes. Yes. Sir, thank you, sir. I appreciate that. Yeah, you know, I little Julius Spike Lee. Sir. Good, huh? sir. I would just say something good, sir. I don't usually speak in a British accent, but good, <laughs> sir. Very well done. Very well done. Yes, <laughs> no, I, uh, I, I, uh, no, I, I have my special coming out, and it's weird. I got uh, it's February 18th on Amazon, yeah, and, and people don't realize I talk about political uh, stuff, point of view stuff, social political stuff, but when I talk about religion. Um, sometimes I feel like religion sometimes gets it wrong and everybody gonna, might get mad when I say this, they get it wrong by not, uh, I'd say like, if you look at Christians and stuff, you got to make room for the people that's trying. Mm -hmm. You can't just shut out everybody, especially when you know they're trying. And that's the problem I've had with, uh, some churches. It's like, don't ex exclude the people that's trying to get the help and want to get the word. That's right. Right? Uh, I mean, right. the most thuggish dude can get turned around. That's right. And so I I, I just, I, but I've seen churches go, oh and, oh, and I don't like the backbiting where the people say, oh, did you see what Miss Wilson's wearing? Look at her shoes. What's that got to do with anything? Yeah. Yeah, you seen it. Come on, you seen it. Yeah, they got the wrong, well, you know, a lot of people have the wrong motives, but see, you got to think of, you got to look at what's happening now. The church is closed. So now the church is closed and people are having to go to social media platforms and, and, and God is, God is fixed it in a way where we have, to, people have to intermingle with right, everybody. Right, 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 so, right, right. So, you know, the church is not a social club, bro, because I, 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 I believe me, I'm coming, my friends and I, we agree exactly with what you say because uh, the church has, has, has blocked people out. The same way that the world has blocked people out, right? And so when you when you have that on both sides, then you have a brother saying, "Man, I'm not going over there because they don't get along over there." I thought I'm supposed to have a Christian love in there, but you no, know, the devil in there too. But then there's some good people in there. So right, so you gotta you gotta weed them out, though. I would tell you, I I would tell you, just don't care about the ones that act crazy because you gotta <laughs> look at like, I, you know, I was born in New York, and when I drive in New York. I have to, I have to change everything. You know, I can't drive like I drive in South Carolina. I can right. drive like Miss Daisy here, but in New York now, I had an old lady flip me off one day. And I said, "That's somebody, Grandma, I'm gonna flip me yeah. off." Yeah, That's and because I was yeah. going too slow, you yeah. know, on Palisade Parkway. So, yeah. you know, I, you know, um, it's just like the same here. You know, same with church. 
is that when you go there, you know what you're going there for. There's a lot of them that you can try. And if that one don't suit your taste, keep it moving and go to another one. But you can't be hung up on them because they're they in there for the wrong reasons when they're trying to judge you by what I you wear to. or right. yeah man i don't even pay attention to that man listen i feel comfortable i'm still getting the word back there you know right, right. i got I my shorts on i got my i got my dallas cowboy jersey on you know right yeah yeah trying I to went, get i went to church uh and I, it just turned me off after that and i haven't gone since um when my pops passed when my oh, pops yeah, passed that, yeah. and i was very i was very you know introspective about it but then i thought maybe i could learn and go and I went and they made me feel so bad. Like, and I'm like, they were like, well, you, you tell comedy and you use those words. And I'm like, uh, okay, but now I'm trying to figure some other things out. And they looked at me like, ah, what are you doing it? Mm, that, that, you know, when people act like you put a little turd under their nose and they go, mm, yeah. Mm, 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 mm. And I'm like, I didn't do nothing bad to you. So it made me feel like, like I got jaded on it. So after that, I was like, you know what? Uh, I'm sure if there's a higher entity in the world, he can hear me from the house. <laughs> yeah, you don't. Yeah. I don't have to come here. And then another person because I had just I had on like a, a turtleneck because that's all. I don't have a lot of fancy clothes. Right. I had a turtleneck on and some jeans and some shoes. That's all. You know. Okay. And, and the one lady said, "Oh, you don't have a suit coat." I, I, like when I walked in, the first thing I walked in, I was like, "What?" Oh, the, no. the service hasn't even started yet. What are you talking about? She says, well, you see it. The other young men wear suit coats. Maybe you can learn from them. And after that, the whole rest of the time I was sitting there going, I don't like these people. <laughs> I got like a little kid. These people are mean. And they don't they're mean to me. Mm. I, I want to throw a booger at her. <laughs> um, I, was, I was like, "What?" So I think that that is not the booger toss. The booger, the booger toss. That's when you throw. <laughs> if you're a grown man and you want to throw a booger at a person, but I, I think that uh, you're right. I think that it, you know you could show up in a jersey or whatever, yeah. as long as you're getting the good food that's going in. What difference does it make? When they ever ask you that again, you ask them this: Say, what what kind of suit Jesus used to wear to church? That's what you Ooh, asked. that would have been oh that would have been them. a perfect see, comeback. You need to ask them that because oh, I think the thing is is that I wish I'd have thought of that. That was that, so you, you know you don't think about the good cut downs till you get down the road though. You know, yeah, like I, people I, say something to you and you'll be like, it'll be the next day, you'll be like, Yeah, I should have said that. I, I know, man. I I, I but but that. but no, honestly, to tell you the truth is um, I will tell you before we get started with the interview, man. Listen, your they have this. People in the church, I'd rather be somebody and you know where I'm at and know where I'm trying to go and I'm just being me and I'm not hiding myself than to be somebody that's in there and faking and covering it up and got all this stuff, got all these skeletons in my closet. Because, hey, the bottom line is at the end of the day, we all working on our soul salvation with fear and trembling. That lets you know, bro, that ain't nobody elite. There's no elite here right. when it comes to that. And so the bottom line is that are you to tell me where i'm at with god you know we have people that lead each other but bro there's nobody can tell you uh and and that's really ignorant about the turtleneck because bro i probably would have left too you know i didn't i, 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 probably, I, stayed, left too. I, stayed, yeah, I, I probably would have left too yeah i would left the whole you know, time I was that? On, and then um i sat towards the back and the lady turned around was talking to some other ladies and turned around and pointed at me wow and then they turned around and looked at his face like, oh. And then as I was leaving, because I stayed the whole time, I listened the whole time. Yeah. And because uh, I was in a weird space, you know what I'm saying? And um, as they were leaving, when she said, that's him in a real nasty way, because I didn't say nothing nasty back to her. I wish I would have yeah. thought of the, what did Jesus wear. Yeah. Um, I didn't say nothing yeah. back. It just made me the whole time I was sitting there, I saw people talking bad about each other. When the, the the pastor took a break and then they had a song and they had a whole band. They, it was like right. a played song. And then there was a break and people kind of, you know, and I could see people talking about each other. Wow. It's talking smack. And I was and I was all by myself, so I don't know anybody. Right. And I was just like, I don't I don't know if I like this. 
You know, this doesn't feel right. And my grandmother had a church. My grandmother owned a church and had a church. But I the whole time financially, she was struggling so much to keep it open that it that was also another thing that made me think, man, this is rough. This is some rough stuff. I mean, it, and, and it was very small, uh, janky, horrible, like, you know, the, the, the floor wasn't really was creaky and everything. But she stayed there the whole time. She probably Mary, was a good preacher too. Yeah, she she rocked probably it. Was really good, excellent preacher. But she oh Mary rocked it. Her name was Mary. Yeah, Mary rocked it. But guess what? And then I would come because they wanted me to come and help out. I would come and help out, help her out. But then after a while, when I got older, um, you know, my pops was on like, "Hey man, it's your choice if you want to go, if you don't want to go." And then I was like, "No, I don't want to go." And then he he didn't make me. He didn't he didn't, he wasn't that type of dude. He's like, "All right, well, you don't want to go." And um. I just feel like when people do that, you got to I wish I would have said that to her. Man, that's such yeah, a good comeback. You got it now, man. See, uh, you got it. I'm your whole boy now. Yeah, you that, man, that was so boy. good. So you can just go and reach out to me. I'll drop a little something on you to drop, <laughs> drop on there every on. now and then. Oh, I would have oh, dropped it on her. That's yeah, a I'll drop thing. a little something on you to drop on there yeah, every I, now and then. That's in the <laughs> comedy business. This is a mic drop. Pow. <laughs> you I, you know, I run into that quite a bit. I had a friend of mine. That's a minister that told me one Sunday that he said, man, I would have I would um invited you in the pulpit, but you didn't have your jacket on. I said, yeah, because we know that's like what the 11th commandment thou shalt wear their ja thy jacket to church every Sunday. Yeah. And, and I mean, I think that people for cosmetic values, man, they miss the whole crux of the gospel. And the gospel is not about alienating people and making people feel bad. The gospel is about drawing people with bands of love. You know, Jesus saying used to go around and tell them people, y'all Pharisees and publicans and sinners, and y'all don't have no, y'all, y'all not, y'all not trained. No, man, they train people. And the thing is that I think that we have to um, look at our differences. And our differences is what actually makes us great. That's what we got the problem right. in the country with. These people don't want to embrace difference and change, you know. You ain't my brother. And hey, listen, I don't know you. You don't look like me. Don't come around here. And I, I'm saying that because I, I was laughing when I heard you on your podcast doing that voice because my friend and I used to do, we do that all the time. And oh, I yeah. Yeah, all it out, like, don't like, they don't like, I don't like your color. And I don't <laughs> like, why is your hair so kinky? I mean, it, you know what? I think that the country is, is split, but I think that religious people are split because a lot of religious people follow uh, um, a, a moral uh, leader for four yeah, years. They follow they followed him and he was never moral and he was never a, a Christian. He lied. Yeah. So it, it kills me where the I see these religious people saying that God sent him here to uh, save us. You better and, preach. And G, uh, Jesus is my Lord. And. And Trump is my God. When you say that, that sounds a little crazy. That is a little crazy. This is the man that liked to grab women by the, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, yeah. what are you talking about? What are you talking about? This is yeah. not the guy you want to look up to. And you don't want your kids to act like him. Because no. if my sons act like him, I'm going to punch them in the back of their leg. <laughs> you know, some of the stuff he said, some of the stuff he did. Come on, man. So I, I, I know what you mean. I think you're at one, I think you're absolutely right. It's like the fact you hit him with the, the level commandment. I was like, oh, hitting him with the level commandment. Boom, in the face. That was a good one. That was another good one. You got, you're got hitting two for two now. I'm, I'm two, you know. for two. Yeah, two, two for right two. Now. You're two but for it, two. It comes from a lot of years of experience because you know what, man, when you see people coming in and like a lot of my friends, um, they, they, they weigh it out and you church hurt people. You make people feel bad about coming to church. You make them feel bad about serving the Lord. And you say, man, that's where we're supposed to have the best ambassadors. But like you were saying earlier, and it's crazy you said that because, you know, with this election and everything, man, I, I've i had friends for 40 plus years that we were, I thought we were down like four flat tires. Right. And, right, and bro, right, right. To, to hear them say some of the things they said, you know, and, 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 and um, it, it just, it hurt me, man. And I mean, it, there's, there's definitely a rift. You know, some of them just came out and just said straight up, you know, with the Capitol riot, they came out and said, hey, man, wrong is just wrong, you know. But what what got me is what, you know, when we had the Breonna Taylors and walls getting 
uh, protected and the sister not getting protected. And, you know, when we had things like that to go on, th there was nothing said. And I said, you know what? Sometimes it's not about what you say. It's about what you don't say. Right. Your silence is, is yeah. what tells me about you. Right. Yeah. And, and, and you can't, there ain't nobody, I get in arguments all the time online with people that say, well, you know, they were just feeling like they were taking their country back. So you stab a cop with a flag, you hit somebody in the head with a fire extinguisher, killing them. That's not, you're not helping. No, absolutely not. That's not helping. And, and then to say, I'm, you know, I'm a Christian, but I felt that my Christian duty to take American flag and he stabbed. There's a video of it. Anybody out there, you can look and see there. You can see they're all fighting. The dude picks the flag up and starts stabbing the uh, the police officer, the Capitol Police in the chest. Uh, the one guy, uh, three broken ribs and losing an eye. And, and it's, it's on video. You can see these people attack. So and these are Christians. Uh, uh, suppose I say suppose a Christian yeah. that think that this is OK. And I just don't think it's OK. And I don't think none they did was OK. And I think that the way they went about it and I don't like the way some of the cops let them just slide on in, open the doors, took pictures with them, uh, selfies. So uh, it makes me question it. But that's a huge you got to think 73 million people voted for him. That means 73 million. And uh, some of them call themselves Christians. Yeah. That what what happened with me with religion, I kept seeing the constant, you know, well, they believe in that. They believe in racism. In fact, I do a bit about that. How can you be a, a total racist, but say you're religious? Because I don't remember anywhere in the Bible where it said, thou shall hate thy neighbor. Ain't nothing in the Bible said that. But they do. They, they if you're a person of color, and uh, what's the uh, the Puerto Rican sister that's uh, AOC? AOC, yeah, that's, yeah, AOC out of New yeah. York, out of the Bronx, all day. AOC don't play oh. now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, they were threatening to kill her. That's crazy. To Did you see? Yeah, and they that's were. Crazy. They said they wanted to hang uh, the vice president. Yeah. And then they said, uh, "What else? Oh, that that she's a troublemaker and she needs to be extinguished." Now I don't know what I don't know what other way that's murdered her to me. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So absolutely. it made me question a lot of stuff. I question that when I see the Roman Catholic Church has lawsuits pertaining to uh, child pedophile. I mean, I, I understand that they have you know you get sexually frustrated. I've been there many times, but many many times after shows when you want to get down with somebody but you don't know them like that. But uh, I'm telling you right now, man, when I see stuff like that and I just go, I think the church has been co-opted by um, social media. Um, I think that white people, let's keep it real, white folks need, like you said, you know, white folks for a long time that you thought was cool. And then you go, but how can you believe in this dude that don't like my race? Well, just just like me because you like me. Don't dislike me because of what's wrapped around my skull. But you do. Um, what is it? The number one this is real. This is real. Uh, this is I'm not making this up. The number one uh, threat uh, terrorist is they said is uh, white supremacist. Did you see that? I saw that. I saw that. Think about that. It's 2021 and we still got to deal with that. Domestic terrorists. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, I said it. Yeah, you're right. That's what it's you called. You know, you're you right. You're right the way you said it, though. Domestic terrorists, you know. And um, I work with the Biden campaign. And let me tell you, I, I will tell you something make you feel good. Man, there's people of all kinds of flavors that were joined together to get that thing done. Um, right. Oh, yeah, that's all that flavors. And so that 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 gave me and that's why I know that there's just some people that they they they're just it's all values all values that they got instilled in them from from when they were children that they don't want to let go of you know and um and, and so that's what we're dealing with and you know i my barber his name is mac he's a very good barber i always plug my barber man oh come yeah, down, yeah. Here, come down here i'm gonna take you to my barber shop man yeah, okay yes that's serious hair yeah, yeah, Columbus, yeah. Right? 
Yeah, I'm in South Carolina. Yeah, no, I, I used to do shows down there at the Comedy House um, yeah. in, in Columbia. And yeah, right. but a lot of the clubs, are, uh, they shut them down. They shut a lot mm -hmm. of the uh, comedy clubs are shut down on the road. I think they're supposed to open back up soon down there. Yeah, they're supposed to be opening back up soon, but you know they do need to get that COVID under control, bro. That COVID is. Something. I think you. Yeah, you're right. You're right. That COVID yeah, is think, a mess now. I think that I think that they uh, you got to do it carefully. You can't just go. Everybody, take your mask off. Let's party. You can't do it that way. I think you got to no. do it kind of, kind of gradually. Does that make you sense? Yeah, since yeah, like, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let me ask you a couple questions. Let me ask you a couple. Okay, questions. here we go. Trouble. Yeah. <laughs> <Starting> trouble. <laughs> when did you know you wanted to be a comedian, Shane? Um, when I was 20, I'm, I'm 57 years old, so I've been doing it 30, so 27? 20, 27. 27. Yeah, 27. And then uh, I, I kind of went back and forth with it. And like, do I really want to do this? And then I had a really horrible show. I bombed. It was a, a two clubs that I, uh, it was a club in Brooklyn called Pips. And I'm telling you right now, they gave me the business. I mean, because I had did well the first two shows. Then, I, you know, you get like, yeah, well, I, I got this. Woo! And then I came on stage and the first joke didn't work. Second joke didn't work. I was like, wow. And then by the, the I'm looking at the three minute mark. I was supposed to do five minutes. I said, well, uh, thank y'all. Good night. Because apparently <laughs> this ain't going to get no better. And I, I go off stage and I the, the, I come over to go leave because you feel bad. And yeah. the guy came over and said, let me tell you something. You look at me looking at you. You're the worst. You made me never want to laugh again. You're so horrible. <laughs> I, I wanted to stab myself in the head with a spoon. You're the worst person I've ever seen tell jokes. Don't you ever do this. You you better go down and get a job at the docks because you suck. And um, and then, <laughs> no, it's the truth. And then after that, what it did was it made me mad. Like, yeah, yeah. Well, I tell you what, <laughs> and then the black and then the black because I'm people think I'm mixed because I'm light skinned, but I'm not. I'd be like, yeah, I'd be, all right, then we'll watch, man. I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you, Vinny. You're gonna see. And then uh, I, I got real serious about it, and I didn't stop. And I haven't, I, but I've been lucky. I I haven't had a I've been doing it thirty. I haven't had a day job in twenty eight. Oh, I've been doing a stand up wow. I, because what I did was, um, you know, I, I would like. I did security for a bit. I would do security at the club, so wow. I literally would be make sure nobody did because you know. Of course, they always hire because I'm a big dude. They go, well, yeah, yeah. get him. And dude, nobody's starting no stuff. And then yeah. I would do that, and then I would tell jokes. So people were like, wasn't well, that the guy that was just at the door? <laughs> 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 no, I, I, I did, um, when I did Def Jam, which was, I did, remember Def Jam used to be big. It was huge. Def Jam was huge, yeah. Was huge. And um, I did Def Jam. I show up, and I did security around a lot of different places. I was security at a place called the Silver Shadow, which was a nightclub. Right. I did one um, up in the Bronx. They had a, uh, I did a security there. I did security in different places. So I would run with the different security guys. So right. I showed up at Def Jam ready to tape. And the security thought I was there to work, as, you know, work the show, <laughs> like to be security on the show. And they was like, so uh, what section are you controlling? And I'm like, no, I'm actually... I'm gonna be on the stage. Yeah. And they was like, what? And they're like, oh, this can't be real. And so all it was so cool. Uh yeah. was a dude named Beast. I remember Beast. And then there was another dude, Shawty, who was like six nine. We called wow. him Shawty. Uh <laughs> another dude named Thurl. We called him his name wasn't Thurl, his name was actually Benjamin. We call yeah. him Thurl because when he did when he got somebody out the club, he was thorough. <laughs> and uh and another dude named Ray, his real name's Ray, but Odd Job. We call him Odd Job because he would twist people in pretzels when they get <laughs> like because the, the the owner of the club we work for he got killed, which is crazy. Oh, man. Yeah, he got killed, man. I um, that. um, he um he would say, I don't care what they do outside the club, don't have them fighting in this club. So whatever you got to do to get them out of the club, get them out the club. So Ray saw that as what I what I can choke them then. 
<laughs> and he literally used to choke people and then drag them out. So, I, and I saw him and he was working the gig and I was like, yo, and Russell Simmons, I was really, you know, nervous because I was like, wow, I got to follow, I have to follow some hitters. Like Paul Mooney was on the show. Yeah. I don't know if you know who Paul, Paul Mooney. Brilliant. Oh, yeah. Rough for Richard Pryor. Yeah, I know. Paul yes. Mooney. Yes. Wow. So you're one of, you know what? A lot yeah. of people don't know that. Wow. Okay. Props to you. Because I'm going to tell you right now, a lot of people don't know some of Richard Pryor's uh, high, hottest bits was actually, uh, for all the people listening, it's Paul Mooney. Uh, and I call, I'm sorry, Mr. Mooney, because it's comics. We got to do Mr. Mooney. Mr. Uh, <laughs> because he influenced me, Dick Gregory. Oh, I come okay. in here, I go get ready to do the taping. All the security normally is out front. They came in and watched me. Wow. It was it was the best feeling. And and I ripped and I ripped yep. because I ran it. I ran my set. I'm not kidding you. I ran it ten times in a row, like back to back to back before I taped. So when I taped, I had it. You know, I had it. Yeah. I, I knew it. I knew it. I went and tried it. Tried it. Tried it. So by the time that Saturday came along, I was already. So the comments were like, "Why are you so calm?" I'm like, "Cause they didn't know I did it ten times. Ten times." Right. Ten times at, from first joke to the last joke. So when I get on stage, I felt and plus one of the one of the guys I know was like, come out and do a kata when you open up. So I did a kata before, which is for the people that are into martial arts. I did a kata and then I did my set and uh, it, it worked out. And then after that, I got some work because it was like I got to pay all these people. I owe money back. Yes, because I'm going to tell you right now, comedy at first was way up and way down. <laughs> I was I was I was doing a lot of stuff. Like, so if I sell, how much blood can you sell? <laughs> it was like that because I didn't want to get a job. I want to do comedy. I was like, well, I, I don't got no food, but I do got blood. <laughs> Hello, Manhattan Plasma Center. <laughs> you already know what it is and i i went in and i i went and the lady who kept seeing me there says sir you can't keep coming back here well, I'll, drink, I'll drink some orange juice i'll be all right uh, you know i used to sell blood um i used to i used to uh this sounds so bad i used to steal uh dog food from perina puppy chow on the docks and sell it to dudes up in harlem for they used to have pit bull fights right and i used to bring the dog food and they would give me a hundred dollars because we would take the dog food and shovel it into bags and give it to them and right. for, the, for the for the pit bull fights and um in fact uh, that's a friend of mine he, he got out of jail like three years ago and when i say a totally different guy it was like malcolm x when he went in and he was red and when he came out he was a muslim wow this dude was Changed. crazy. I'm talking about licking windows crazy. <laughs> and he came out. He was, he is, <laughs> check this out. He's married now. He, um, he's the head manager of Rite Aid now. Wow. And this dude, it was, I'm talking about thug. I'm talking about like a thug. And now he's the, and he came, him and his wife came to my show. I was doing a show at a club called Caroline's, um, Caroline's on 50th and Broadway. Mm -hmm. And he came to the show and I, I was stunned because I knew him from before. Like, yeah, dude, you would bite a dude's forehead. You were, <laughs> and, he, and now he was so calm and like, hey man, I'm really proud of you, brother. And he's talking real calm. I'm like, did you drink a lot of Java coffee or something? Like, <laughs> You know that that coffee house, like, yeah, man. You know, life changes, brother. And I was like, why are you whispering? What's wrong with you? It was so weird. But no, I mean, I I just called him to check on him because he um he he caught COVID. Oh man, he's good though. He's good. He um right. he he was sick for about seven days, and he said it felt like somebody was uh it felt like a big dude was stepping on his chest. I, I don't know if that's a good description. But yeah, I guess people that uh, get it, they said that their, uh, what is it, their respiratory system? Yeah, I heard that. I heard, I that. heard yeah, oh, I heard that. Please. Yeah, yeah. He said it, and then he said after a couple of days, he couldn't smell, 
And then after a couple of days, it, he felt better. He felt better. He felt better. And now he's better. And my friend Rollo just got it. And now he's uh, out of Phoenix. He's a promoter. And he, he's having problems. Like he's breathing. Like, you know, the. I don't know what happens. I guess it what does it do. Because I, I heard it on the news. Does it attack your lungs? Yeah, I think it attacks your lungs, your um, your um, it 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 stop, you know. That's why a lot of people have to go on a ventilator because it makes it hard to breathe. A friend of mine told me that when you cough, he said, uh, it hurts so bad and it's so hard to to kind of um. He said it when when you cough, it makes you feel like collapsing. Wow. He says so much pain and um yeah, my friend Lamb was telling me about it when he had it and um and that's the same thing I hear so. You know, I, I never have second thoughts about putting a mask on. But wow, see, you know what? There's a lot of people that feel like you're taking away my freedom from yeah. putting on a mask, and I can't show my friends if I'm smiling. <laughs> it's just that. Come on, man. <laughs> yeah, I put that mask on, brother. I walk around with it. Hey, they, they'll say, "Who's that mask man?" <laughs> That's right. I'm the Lone Ranger. I, I was hey, asking all day long. I, I have. I just ordered. The, I ordered one, uh, and then I had my me and my son has one, and I I have one that uh, uh, the person I was working with before made me one where I can. It has my logo on it, so I I'm starting to you know realize that if we all do that, yeah. it might help. But I think that there's a certain amount of the country that feels like it's going against their. I don't know. What do you think? What do you yeah. think? They they're not bright. I'm just gonna tell you that that that's just not being bright because it's like, yeah, man, you know, it's like you know. I didn't expect I, you to say that. Yeah, I'm not driving that. I'm not. I'm not getting in that car because it, it it it's got wheels. I'm not driving anything that has wheels. Yeah. Somebody say, hey, don't don't ride in anything that has wheels. You know, so you see them, you know, with their horse on the freeway and on Palisade yeah. Parkway. You know, yeah, exactly. Uh, exactly. George Washington on um on a horse. Yeah. And so I mean, it's just. It's what's going to save you, man. And I think that um, people need that hair to it, bro. Put your mask on. You know, wear your mask. Right. I mean, didn't they say that that, that curves it just from uh, if more people did it? But there are a lot of people they said that aren't doing it. And with the Super Bowl coming up, they said a lot of people are setting up parties and stuff. What it does is it'll get better. And then we all do that. Like, and then it gets worse. Yeah. We have holidays. People. You know, you know, everybody can't go to Big Mama house on Thanksgiving. Not now. You know? yeah. Not but now. You better get Big Mama on video chat. Yeah, exactly. You, know, you better eat some. Yeah, you better eat some virtual sweet potato pie. <laughs> Big Mama, that sweet potato pie look good, but I'm going to stay right here. Listen, yeah. you know, I don't have friends get together, too. They'd be like, yeah, man, we getting together, man. We're going to do a little. I'd be like, bro, y'all getting together without me because I'm fat. You know, yeah. so I tell them, I say, listen, I'm fat. I got to, hey. hey, yeah, you know, I got more fighting to do. Yeah, so and, I didn't know, man. Up, I'm not. I, yeah, I believe wow. me. I didn't. I haven't. I didn't see my um my youngest. My youngest is with his mom. I, I only have two boys, and my youngest is with his mom. I haven't seen him in because he has under he has a lot of underlying medical condition, and uh, I haven't seen him since uh, for nine months. Wow, and that's the longest. It's the yeah. I, when I used to tour and everything, I've never gone this long. The longest I've ever gone was because we we would. Well, alternate. He would be with me a week and then her a week. And what I would do is when it was her week, I would go on the road. Right. And then I'd come back home and then it'd be my week and I'd do all right. shows in L.A. So, um, yeah, but I mean, I, he's he's good. He's just he, he has a lot of uh, he's always he has used to when he was little, he had to get blood transfusions because he has a problem with his blood. So I know that it's not safe for him. My older son, I, I, same thing. I tell him just wear the mask, but he don't have no problem with it because he, he's like, he got these cool uh, masks with the superheroes on it. Yeah. So he, he's got, he, he's cool with it. Like you know, he got the, he got the cool mask, and um, and then there's another one I was gonna get for my son. It looks like the Hulk, cause he likes, he likes the. Uh, are you kidding me? I man, listen, man. I love the Hulk, man. Oh yeah, no, it's, I, yeah, they, <laughs> that is crazy that I said that, and you had the whole crazy. Absolutely there. right. People gonna think we planned that though. They planned. I know they. I know. They, I know they're gonna think he we told him last night. He, he, told he was I the swear whole, I didn't. I did up, not. Yeah. That was not planned. Um, <laughs> my son used to love. He likes um, 
Iron Man, that's his number one. Uh, 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 Batman, and then third is the Hulk. Because he likes Iron Man because uh, he can. Uh, he he was a human that was right. real smart and could make stuff. But and he liked Batman because he thought Batman looked cool, and he liked the Hulk because the Hulk can pick up cars and throw. <laughs> And um, so it's weird that that's what they gravitated to. And then I and then I was like, I watched the movie with him. I was like, yeah, man, the Hulk is kind of cool. He and is I, cool now. Yeah, I, I watched. I, I haven't seen the other one. They said that there's one where he fights Abomination. That's the name of the character. I haven't seen that one. They said there's one that's really good with. Um, uh, what's the guy's name? Uh, Edward Norton. The actor Edward Norton plays the Hulk. And it's uh, before the Hulk they had now. And they right. said it's really good. I haven't seen it, though. Uh, but I've got time now because a lot of my gigs, yeah. I might watch that one. Movies. And I want to watch. I watched Avengers. No, not Avengers. Avengers was the bomb, man. I loved Avengers, man. Did you? Uh, no, I watched. Uh, I didn't see the other one. I watched um, Ultron. And that was oh. dope. Ultron's bad now. That one, I watched that one. And I watched the other one. I had uh, the not the first one. It's weird. I watched them out of order because I watched right. the the next one and then I had to go back and watch the first one because I didn't know what was like. Why are they? Oh, Civil War. Civil, Civil War. War. Civil War. Is, Civil Where War Black is Panther was. In it. Yes. Yeah. Civil War is good. Yeah. That's one of my favorite now. Oh, wow. OK, so I ain't gonna pull no know. more up because I ain't got no more on the desk. Yeah, but no, I, I, and I got and I, I was always hip to Black Panther in the comic book, but I thought they did a great job. I thought uh, that was one of the best, the uh, Marvel movies. Cause I, I really dug Iron Man. I dug oh, the yeah. Iron Man movie, but Black Panther kind of took it another level. Yeah, Black Panther was all was was all the way on, and you know, it, it, I, I liked the background of the movie and and the, the cinematography was awesome. But what I really loved was the story, you know, um, and 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 Wakanda. You know, made you feel like, yeah, man, I'm going to Wakanda, man. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> yeah. Like, they, got, they can't get along here. I'm going to Wakanda. Yes, I'm, that's on my yeah. bucket list now. On Wakanda. Right. I'm going but to Wakanda. But it was beautiful. All these black people, they had a, a, in fact, it was one of the movies where I saw, they saw the white people were the minority. Right, right. If you look at it, there wasn't a lot of white, there was no white lead. It was, yeah. It was Killmonger was the villain. Yeah. Uh, 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 Chadwick Boseman, uh, rest in peace. Yeah, really. um, I thought it was it made a lot of young black kids feel like proud. And that was the other reason I liked it. I liked the fact that there was people embracing that we can be kings, we can be queens. Yeah. Uh, Angela Bassett as the moms, I thought was a oh, good choice. Yeah. Wasn't that a good choice? That was an awesome choice. That was great casting. Yeah, that's what back. I thought. Because yeah, she's so classy. Yeah, she, she's got this thing about her. I was like, yeah. Yeah, I could see her as the queen of Wakanda. Does that make sense what I'm saying? I, exactly, it does. I, I totally dug that movie. I've watched it. I know y'all go, people going to make fun of me. I've seen it at least seven times. Man, there's nothing wrong with that. No, somebody clowned me because I they uh, they called me up. I had went and did a virtual show. Laugh Factory right. does these things called virtual shows where right. you're in the club, but people are on these big screens. So you oh. can. So you do the show to the screens. Right. Did the show. I came back. My friends were like, "What you gonna do tonight?" Ah, oh, man, I'm probably gonna watch Black Panther. I said, "Didn't you already see that, like, <laughs> like six times?" I'm like, "Yeah, but I saw the little trailer, and I was like, man, I gotta watch that again." So I, I literally watched it again because I dug that scene where he jumped on top of the car. Oh yeah. And he, he that purple kind of force field thing came around him, and he picked the car up, and it flipped. And then he landed on the other car. I was like, come on now, son. Yeah, man. Movies give us a certain kind of feeling, you know? That, I so, actually clapped. I clapped. Yeah. I was like, yo, that was ridiculous. I love that scene. And when at the end, when he was uh, the rhino, that rhino ran up on him with a metal covered rhino. Right. Yeah. And he jumped down, and all the dudes was about to jump on him. And, the, and then he did this, and then all this. And it blew them away. And uh, I, one of my favorite movies. I'm sorry, we can do a movie review now. But I'm serious. You know, this is the movie review with um, <laughs> my brother, uh, Brother yes. Savage. He's yes. the movie yes. reviewer. <laughs> if, if anybody ain't seen that movie, watch that movie. The movie is good as hell. 
you need to see Black Panther. Black Panther is a good movie. Yeah. So, 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 Shang, I'm gonna ask you a question. And Shang, you said something about karate earlier. So you know karate? Uh yeah, I did it for quite a while. When I from my um, teens until my mid thirties, and then I'm still into it. In fact, I. I, I'm a I'm a regular uh, on a show called MMA Roasted, um, mm-hmm. which is a, a mixed martial arts show where we interview different um, people. And yeah, I did I did that for a while. I was uh, I did Taekwondo and Shotokan, and then uh, I did to, made it to the Washington Finals, which was cool in uh, full contact. And then, um, but then as I got older, I was like, man, too many things is hurting. I ain't. Yeah, I don't go to the gym no more. I gain weight and said after I gain weight, I tore my groin muscle. And oh. after, that, whoo, after that, I was like, you know what? I don't need none of this karate stuff. Yeah, look, karate man. Uh, you know what? I'll hit you with my car. I ain't <laughs> I ain't doing none of that no more. Man, let me tell you something. That when you do that, and I tore it off the bone. Oh, it was bad. It was bad. Tore it off the bone and chipped. There was a chip the size of a peanut out of my hip. So I had to get that taken care of. And uh, that surgery was uh, that was a <laughs> that was no joke. And so I ain't did it. I ain't did it like that since. But then again, I tell jokes now, so I don't really got to deal with none of yeah, that. That's right. I tell those you tell those jokes. But yeah, listen, so, yeah, so, yeah. But now I know you can I know you can do karate. But can you talk like the karate people on Kung Fu Theater? Of That's course, what I want to know. Of course I can. You think your karate is better than mine. <laughs> yeah, of course I got <laughs> Shang Lu, Chen Li. Hmm. It's like a finger pointing to the moon. Take your eye off the finger and you miss all the heavenly glory. <laughs> I love those movies. I grew hey, up. Hey, you I killed my up. sister. Yes. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you're <good>. oh <laughs> right. you, nah, you killed my teacher. And you will eventually pay for it. <laughs> no, uh, I just like I, I used to go. My pops, this sounds like the remember the movie The Last Dragon? Right, uh, Bruce Leroy. Yeah, wow. Yeah. Okay, okay we're, well, yeah, you got it. We yeah. same age, man. Yeah, we same age. Yeah. Yeah. If I say that to people, they go, what? What? Um, Last Dragon? Last Dragon? What are you talking about? <laughs> so, no, um, I literally used to live that way. My my pops, with his flaky self, <laughs> would <laughs> pick me up and take me to see Enter the Dragon. It was Enter the Dragon, Vista Fury, and uh, Five Fingers of Death, they used to oh, have wow. matinee where it would start at one and you'd be done around six. So he would literally leave me there and then he'd come pick me up and act like he hung out with me, with my moms. But I never said nothing because I was like, I I love it. I'm, I'm a, and he would take me there on Saturdays. I would go at one o'clock and get out of there at six. And that's all I did. Like literally, watch back to back movies. At the back karate movie. And, and then, at my friend's house, we go over there, and my friend was like, "His name is Jamal, bro." He didn't want nobody talking because he was trying to study the moves. So he wow, could, yeah, he was yeah. into it. Yeah. So he was sitting in there, and you got a bunch of guys, man, and we stupid. So we're laughing at everything, you know. And he don't want you to say nothing, man. He's like, <laughs> I'm, gonna, "I'm gonna throw you out the house, man. I'm serious." I'm like, "How you gonna throw me? I'm your guest." You gonna throw us out the house? I'm you gonna you, Dan. I'm gonna you up. You can go home, man. And you know yeah. he knew he had like this real cool Dan. So everybody was like hanging in the den, you know. And and man, we be watching it. We called it Hop and Chop, right? We it hop and Chop. We watch Hop and Chop, and man, did he want to throw us out the house, man? So yeah, right. but I'm a, I know oh, yeah. a real I know a real karate guy now. I'm gonna tell him. I'm gonna be like, no, I was I was serious. Like, Don't make me call my boy Shang now. No, I was serious as a heart attack for a while there, but I still got I got so many problems now medically because yeah. of that. like my my knuckles are all messed up this one is just look you can stick your finger in there Ooh. it's messed up so i i uh you no it, was, it wasn't a good thing for me I, I i'm paying for it i'm paying for it dearly but um no i couldn't hang with none of these cats now now these cats is on some other level they would kill me but yeah. when you you know then i did it because this dude marty was bullying me uh wow. I, I didn't do it because i was drawn to it i was like i'm sick of it Marty was like, he seemed like he was 32. Like, this is a grown man. What is he doing in what's he doing in middle school? He's a grown <laughs> man. He had a mustache. Yeah, everything. What's that? What, what, why are they letting this grown man? And he hated me. 
and he would just punk me. And I used to hide in the, um, I used to hide in the uh, janitor closet. I was scared of this dude. And then I, over a summer, I just, I went to, it was called a house of champions. Yeah. Big Jim, Frank Friedman was, who was a full contact champion. Um, I went there and uh, they were like, this will help you get yourself centered. So I did it because of that. And then I got in some tournaments and then uh, I lost uh, lost my first two. So I got discouraged and then I kind of just came back and then I did I did well. But as I got older, I was I would I had received so many, you know, I was hurt so many times. Like even if you win, you're hurt. Right. All right. And so I was hurt a lot. And then as I got older, that it was older when I tore my growing muscle. Um, I, as I got older, I noticed I couldn't recover as well. Um, I was con my feet, my, my hands, my shoulder, my shoulder, especially my shoulder, my shoulder still bothers me. So where I like, literally I can't sleep on this side because if I do, I wake up, I could barely move. So some people can handle it. I think, uh, some people are really good at it. For me, I was just too in pain all the time. I call and, it. And I, and I was, and I was winning. I'm the winner and I'm and like I, and yeah, and I don't I couldn't I put it this way. Uh I could not there was I, I there was one tournament I remember we went it was in Delaware. I literally had to put the seat down. They because we didn't have nobody. Now they're flying them everywhere and everybody right. got money. It was, I got a trophy, whatever. And they had to put the seat down in the car because I had to lay because I couldn't sit up. Because wow. this this dude kicked me in my side so hard, um, I went ah like a girl, <laughs> and uh, and they didn't let me forget that either. <laughs> they didn't never let me forget that. Like ah oh my god, he's killing me. God no, yeah. Hide your wife, hide your kids. He's killing everybody. It was crazy, man. I don't want to fight no more. <laughs> <laughs> Why are we fighting? Can't we just talk? You like, do you like shortcake? I like shortcake too. Um, and other thing, the reason was, and I ballooned up. Well, I ballooned up because I had medical problem, but uh, because of my stupidity. Uh, but um, I didn't like constantly being on a diet. Yeah. I hated it. I was like, I want some pizza. So I, yeah, I was, uh, but now I'm, 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 because of my blood pressure, I'm losing weight, not because of my, because I want to look now, I'm not one of those people. Like I'm very comfortable. I'm I'm six two. I'm very comfortable being the way that I was. I was three right. sixteen. I was like very comfortable with it. I didn't feel bad. I didn't feel bad about myself and none of that. Um, my doctor was like, "Cause my blood pressure." Yeah, you gotta do that. And they said that so I'm losing weight now because of my blood pressure, not because it, it's strictly they told me <laughs> like like when they tell you the doctor, goes, "Hey man, you got to get that blood pressure under control." So. And that, but now they give me pills. I take uh, I take these pills every day. Yeah. And they said that that's helping. I take uh, those. And they said that. Did you notice? I did not notice. They said I can't have salty foods. Yeah, you can't have salt, man, because salt retains water. I have blood pressure um, issues too, so salt retains water. So I really don't salt my food. I'll, if I get some salt, I'll just sprinkle a little bit. Just on a little it. bit, right? Yeah, no, I, I, it'll I make you swell up. It'll make you swell up. Cause I, I was like, are you water. serious? And he said, try to stay away from spicy. Don't do a lot of spicy. I'm like, why? He said, yeah, there's a lot of salt and spice. He said, I was like, when they gave me the list of stuff, I couldn't. I was like, are you serious? I love, I love, I love greens with a lot of salt on them. Yeah, yeah. Then, I used to like salt too. Oh, yes. but you want to live. You know, you yeah, want to live. Exactly. I was like, yeah, I, told myself, live, I want to be, a, I want to see you, you know, well, he's 23 now. Uh, he in the room now, so probably yeah. still sleep. Um, I want, I want to live to see you be a grown man, but it was so weird. My blood pressure um, spiked to the point where they were like, they went, I was in the hospital for something else and they wouldn't let me leave. They wouldn't let me leave. I had like 2019, I had a lot of problems with my kidneys because of kidney stones. And uh, I, they wouldn't. I I was feeling great. Other than I was feeling fine, but I didn't know you could feel fine. And you're. Did you know that? Did you know you could feel fine, but your blood pressure be off the hook? Yeah, they call it the silent killer. That's what my barber used to tell me because 
I really? Is that what they call? Are you serious? Oh yeah, they call blood pressure the silent killer because man, you you never know it. You, you can walk around all day long and that blood pressure be horrible. You know. I didn't even know it. Uh, oh yeah. I had got surgery on the, on my um because I got kidney stones removed because I, I I had sepsis and I got really sick uh, in 2019 and then um I felt fine. I felt fine. I got the surgeries. I felt fine after my surgeries. I felt fine. Okay. And then uh, I went in for them to take the stents out and they said that something happened with my blood pressure spike and they literally wouldn't let me leave. I, I didn't leave it for like two days. And, and they were like, until my, I guess until my, it came down and then they let me leave. And then I had to take all these pills, but that's why I appreciate, I appreciate, even though there's bad stuff going on, I try to wake up with gratitude a lot more. Yeah. Cause we alive. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think you I think you're right. And uh I've been lucky like comedy wise, a lot of comics give me mad props and it's weird when you some of course the comics, there's comics that think I suck. Um and there's a lot of times I think I suck, but I think that uh it's weird. A lot of my peers give me mad props and that kind of keeps me going. And uh even though I'm single right now, uh, I'm at peace though. I, I think that that's the main thing being at peace. Uh, I've been single for quite a while, and I think that people are like, "Well, why didn't you get a girl or something?" I say, "Well, I don't know how you dating in COVID. I don't want to know. <laughs> what, what do you? Yeah, I'm not doing that. So oh, virtual date, huh? <laughs> I'll do a virtual date, or you meet me at the park and wave from me from across the park. Uh, yeah, girl, he on TV. He on HBO, girl. I'm gonna oh, tell yeah, you no. now. Yeah, I got on a dating app, <laughs> and the one girl was like. Uh, I, I I hit her. I swiped her. I swiped her, and then yeah. she, I guess she responded, and she's like, "I I went to see him in concert, and I know you're using his picture, and that's your that's not you." <laughs> and then I kept telling her, "No, this is really me. I'm really on the dating app because my friend Keith is a comic, and he said, man, you need to get on the dating apps because you don't right. be out because I don't like literally when I do shows, I didn't party. I didn't party or nothing." I, I think the discipline I got from before with that, I kind of transferred it over to comedy. I literally would do my shows. Right. Uh, you, you, what you do is you sign stuff afterwards and then, or I'd sell t-shirts and my stuff and go right back to the room and then work on my, my work on my act. So I never really partied. I never really was out there. Like I was never, I never hoed around, which yeah. now I regret it. But no, man, I don't regret that, I man. Regret it. No, man, I'm gonna keep it real. I regret it. I, I when I when I started doing okay at comedy, I should have hold around, but I didn't. And um, I, I just there was so I was I I missed a lot of hold them. There was a lot of hold downs I should have been at because there was a lot of hoes at the shows, and so I didn't. But I didn't. I just I was so I was so blinded to like do your show, handle your business. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, don't be trying to. Get at everybody. Um, make sure your act's tight because end of the day, uh, people pay their money. People get babysitters. You got to you, you you if you and your woman go, you got that price. Then you got to pay for parking. Then you got to pay for the drinks if you buy some food. So that's a two hundred some dollar night. And then the right. comic act like you ain't supposed to come up there and do your hundred percent. That is some punk stuff right there. I see comics that get really famous. And they get real like, I don't really have to work on it. I'm already famous. And I know them. And then they'll go up on stage and they'll mess around for like an hour and not do their act, not do well, and don't care because they're walking out with like, you know, $25,000. Right. So, and, and to me, if you're a person going to see them, you feel gypped. Dang, that's what they walk out with, 25000 Oh, that's low end. I'm going to start I'm gonna start telling jokes. Can you, you get this low end? Jokes. Yeah, I'm going to start telling jokes. <laughs> 25 racks minimum. I know a couple of comics that I that make more than that. Um, way more than that. Uh, I'm not going to tell you right, how. Yeah, don't put the business DL out Hughley, DL yeah. Hughley, DL Hughley gets paid. Uh, hey. Pay paid. Earthquake is doesn't do bad. Uh, there was a uh, Mike Epps. Uh, Mike Epps gets the bag. Um, Tiffany gets Haddish the bag. gets the bag. Tiffany Haddish gets the bag when she does comedy. Um, I just like, I, I'm not at that level. I've, there's been times when I've, I haven't gotten that much, but, um, I, when I used to do, um, black college, um, uh, not, what is it called? The uh, homecomings. 
Homecomings. Those are big shows. I, I open it for big, big name acts. You know, um, when I was doing stuff like that, like if you open for a Mary J. Blige or uh, like a big name act, you can get more money. So I'm unfortunately for me, um, I've fluctuated from that. But what's works for me is I've done my own th clubs and theaters where I do small theaters. Like, right. I can't sell. I can't. I'm not big enough to sell out uh, the, these three thousand and five thousand theaters. You got to be Kevin Hart level to do right. that. So I'm like, if I can sell out a 900 to 1100 seater, I'm happy. And my tickets aren't that high. So I consistently do well because if my tickets are $15 instead of $75, $75. Cat Williams tickets, $130, $140 people. But Cat, he's Cat Williams. But Cat Williams. but if, if somebody like, yeah, you know what? That light skin dude, I'll go see him for $15. You know You're what I'm funny, saying? Man. You're funny. Uh, I appreciate it, man. Yeah, I'm, man I'm, you're funny. You, I, I like your comedy. Your comedy is, yeah, you're funny, man. No, nah, I'm working on it, man. Still yeah, working on it. Yeah, you, you're funny, man. I, I want to ask you another question. I only got a couple more because okay, no, man, that's cool. I enjoyed this. I, I, I enjoyed this time we've had together, man. You know I'm going to ask you a question. You're not like a, I, I, I had a couple, I did a two in Africa and they were cool, but they were so stiff. Like, so. Yeah. What is it that made you do comedy? <laughs> but whereas with you, it's like we're just having a conversation. Does that make You're sense? Talking, man. Right, right. It's not, it's not that like question number what? Question. No, I did it. I had to wake up like three in the morning because I was doing some interviews in Africa. Uh and uh and then some Soweto. I think I'm saying yeah. it right. Is that how you say it? I think so. I think it is. Uh. You nailed it, man. You nailed it. And so, yeah, it was it was interesting. And then this other one in San Francisco interviewed me. Uh, what was it? Was it Thursday morning? And I got up, you know, it's a morning thing and I did it and it was so stiff. So comedy. What do you how do you? Yeah, it was so stiff. Yeah. And I was like, I, I feel like it's a robot interviewing me. <laughs> Whereas with you, we just talking and it okay. like. Right, it's more and more natural. I don't know. Yeah, does that make sense? What I'm saying it's more. Yeah, well, we contemporaries. We're about the same age. We yeah, talk so about you, things. Well, you know, I said last dragon. You got it. I didn't. Yeah, have man, we can talk about things. Right. You know, Whereas you said some people that make you feel old. You know. Yeah, yeah, young. Yeah, you talking to a young interviewer? Yeah. Uh, Enter the dragon. And what? Yes. Yeah, I had a girl tell me one time at work. You know, I I, I got sketches because you know I don't wear all those little shoes they got. You know, I can't because I got right. these dogs. And um, and I, I had on some sketches, and she said, "Miss Cornell, where you get those diabetic shoes from?" I said, "I know she ain't cracking on me talking about I got diabetic shoes." Wow! I had to laugh, man, because it was funny. Oh, I, I, I had to laugh. She said, "My granddad got some diabetic shoes just like that." I said, "These ain't no diabetic shoes; these sketches." Yeah, I my feet are just jacked up. I have uh, had surgeries on my feet a lot. Yeah. So my feet, I got to wear the wider shoes because or yeah, I it, wear the wider shoes. I can't wear those little thin Adidas. I can't. No, I, no support. I, yeah, I tried it, and when I say my foot, I took that thing off. My foot was jacked up. So, all these, yeah. But it's just, it seemed like this, it's a little bit more smooth. Like it's not as, uh, I don't know. It was real stiff. What was it do? And it was another guy named Moon Dog. He was a. I thought he was gonna be real loose because he said, right. he "Hit me up on the Facebook. Hey, this is Moon Dog. I know you got a special coming out. I saw the clip." And I want to interview you. I'm like, cool, let's do it. Um, I, I couldn't do it for a couple of weeks because I had a couple of things I had lined up. And then I finally did it. And it was the most like stiff, corny. It was corny. It was he was horrible. I know this is messed up. And if he see this, I don't care. <laughs> he know karate, Moon Dog. We yeah, know well, I, now, I mean, I can handle myself, but now I'm old. Yeah. Fat. I'm like, I ain't trying to get no fights. Well, I'm gonna talk the trash, Moondog. <laughs> you talk trash for me, yeah. So that's right. Yeah, and Moondog. I, I, his name was Moondog, and, and was, I live in I live in Missouri. Yeah. There you go. He this he said. You know, I tell a few jokes, and I was like, okay, tell the joke. He said, why did chicken cross the road? No, they didn't tell you that. Bull, and he said, <laughs> he said, um, to get to the other side. Right. And I was waiting, like. Yeah, like where's the rest of the joke? Is that that was it? He said, "Come on, you got to admit that's hilarious." Wow. Yeah, yeah, and and it was it was a thirty five minutes of just 
So when you write <laughs> jokes, what, where do you write them? Do you write them? Do you write them in the bathroom? Do you write them in the bedroom? Where do you write them? That was one of the questions. <laughs> Come on, man. On the paper. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, you know what's weird now with me? With I used to use a little recorder. I used to. Yeah. I used to use a little, uh, you know, the little micro back in the day, they had the little tiny recorders with a little tiny tape. Oh, I know what you're talking about. The tiny tape. This yeah, not so, like that. I'm getting ready to show you. We so much light, bro. I, That's what I got now. Though. Yep. And I used to uh, talk out jokes. There's another comic that I really, uh, I, I love his set. Uh, I think he's a, well, I'm a huge Chris Rock fan. I think Chris Rock. Oh, is, I love Chris Rock, man. I think Chris Rock is the Chris truth. Chris Rock's bad. A, a Bill Burr is the truth. Yeah. Um, but I really like Chris Rock. I really like that he, like his last special, talking about his divorce. That was some raw stuff. Talking about, you know, the mistakes he made and being honest. I, I just really thought that that was a really good special. And I think that there's another special, if you get a chance, where he just murders. Um, it's called Bigger and Blacker. I, you know what? I looked, I, I didn't get, I didn't see that. I saw it on Netflix. I didn't watch it. I'm going to watch it today. I'm telling you, he murdered that. That was a, he killed from the first joke he came out to the last joke. Really strong set. And, uh, and I know him. I know him. Right. You know what I'm saying? I know him. And um, he really works on his craft. Like he literally sits down and really, he walks around. You know those yellow legal pads, old school, big legal right. pads? He literally sits and that's how he does his stuff. He'll go through it and he'll try to joke and then he'll scratch it off. And he does it like that. I do it with a recorder because it's easier for me to listen back and go, OK, right. that, that sounds right. That's all right. OK, you can do this voice. Um, but, yeah, he uses a legal pad. And I just as well. Yeah. And, and, and he's one of the biggest acts in the world. And he's still doing it <laughs> like right <laughs> stuff on a legal pad. I'm like, what? But he's really good. You know, back in the day, people slept on, uh, I think a lot of comics, young comics sleep on. Eddie Murphy, Delirious, was one of the best. Eddie Murphy is, is incredible. I mean, he's still funny. People are like, ah, oh, he old school, he this, he that. Eddie Murphy's funny. I don't care he what nobody said. I was arguing with these young comics at the comedy store once, and they're like, ah, oh, Eddie Murphy ain't funny. I mean, I'm like, did you ever see any specials? Nah, but I just heard. I'm like, dude, you got to watch them. You got to like, and then uh, they were like, Richard Pryor. I seen him in that movie with Superman. He was terrible. I'm like, hey, crazy. Richard Pryor was hilarious. Uh, was it Bunny, uh, the big collard green eating lady? Oh my lady. God. Richard Pryor Man, come on. and and come on. Richard Rudolph Pryor. and the monkey foot. Oh, <laughs> he's rich. But people, I think you got to think. Young people now, they don't, they don't, don't that. realize that a lot of those comics. If you look at Martin Lawrence and you oh, anybody now this people can say you ask some of those heavy hitter comics who they thought was the best. Yeah, and they, and Martin Lawrence is funny. Martin Lawrence creating his characters. Oh my goodness. Oh Otis? Yeah. But, oh. I love Will Otis now. Martin we Lawrence. Love Will Otis. You wasn't like Will Otis when you were security, were you? Uh, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I'm gonna tell you who. Uh Damon Wayans. Damon Wayans is funny. Talented. So mm -hmm. I think that uh, what happens is there's such a disconnect from younger comics realizing these comics are the ones that kind of paved the way for, I know they paved the way for me. Yeah. I wouldn't be here if there was a Dick Gregory. I wouldn't have, I've made a living at comedy. I would, if it wasn't for Dick Gregory, Paul Mooney. Yeah. Um, man. Uh, people don't know Dick Gregory was uh, a huge comic at a time. Um, I didn't like people like, oh, did you like Bill Cosby? I never was into Bill Cosby. You wasn't into Bill Cosby. I, I liked I no, I thought he was brilliant. Yeah, I like Fat Albert. My, yeah, but he wasn't my favorite. He wasn't my yeah. favorite. I used to like um I, I liked Red Fox. This is old school. People don't yeah, know. They might not even yeah. know. Red. Come they on, might, on. People gonna watch this interview. Who, yeah. Red Fox? Who's Red Fox? Red Fox. Uh actually my major influence was Eddie Murphy, Dick Gregory. Um Paul Mooney for sure, because Paul just didn't care. He didn't care. He would just say anything on stage. Same man. Yeah, he was raw, man. Yeah. Listen, listen, white people. It's your. <laughs> I'm Paul. And then, Mooney. and then Dave Chappelle used to bring him on. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh no, that was great that uh, Dave Chappelle put him on. I like Chappelle. I, I, I like Chappelle a lot. Um, again, I'm a friend of his. Um, yeah. Uh, but there was some comics that didn't make it huge that passed away that were friends of mine. I thought were brilliant. Bill Hicks. Um, but I, my main, my main guy, I would say probably would be a combination of Dick Gregory, Dick Gregory, and Eddie Murphy. I just loved. I love Murphy, man. I thought Murphy, Murphy made me laugh. There was something he did. Um, Raw. It was an interview he was doing, and he was talking about the movie Shrek. And I, I'm talking about this interview. He was hilarious, and I just think people forget how good Eddie Murphy is. Um, I'm gonna see how this coming to America two is oh, is yeah. coming out. I'm waiting for that. Did you see? I saw the trailer. It looked good, yeah. man. Yeah, and I, you know, I like Murphy. I, what I like Murphy, I like the way he creates characters. But man, like Norbit. Oh, Ooh. I you know what? There was parts in that made me laugh really hard. Norbit. And I liked Norbit, but you know what? The one that made me laugh the hardest was I'd say Nutty Professor. Nutty Professor was funny. Because he was everybody. He was. Here's a scene name. at the table. That's with, right. And he's, <laughs> the grandmother was hilarious. You try me, Cletus. You try me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and the mother, Sherman, 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 Sherman. Come on, man! But if but if you're you gotta think if you're 20, you don't know that movie. Know that you know. And they if don't know our music either, man. You know what I'm saying? Because when you, you talk about Chell to Adidas, I used to go in the Lancy Street because that's when I was a rapper back in the day, you right? Know, as everybody else was, and I go buy <laughs> fake, I buy a fake jewelry, man. I buy the um little don, the uh, lion head rings with the little emerald eyes. Yeah, I my Chell to Adidas on. I was cool, man. Then I come back to South Carolina to go to school. And oh man, you couldn't tell me that they'd be like, oh, he got a record contract. I was, right, he got a record contract. Like, he ball, yeah. he's balling, he's, he's balling. balling. Now he got a record contract. Them rings cost five dollars a piece. Yeah, they don't know. Yeah, you they don't know that though. You know, they don't know up in the Bronx, Fordham Road, you can get the clothes and knockoff oh, yeah. clothes right. everywhere. Oh, I right. used to get knockoff stuff. I went on my first late night spot. I bought all my clothes from there. Yeah, I bought the jeans from there. They were seven dollars. I bought That's some right. tennis shoes, knockoff tennis shoes. Uh, they were they look like they were Jordan's, but they wasn't. I think it was, right. it was Jordan's cousin Jamal's, <laughs> and they was called Jamal's. And, and they, but they looked like Jordan's. And I wore them on the show, and, and people thought, oh man, you was clean. I'm like, had no idea. I spent $38 for that whole outfit. Wow. And yeah, Patterson, New Jersey. I used to go to Patterson all the time and get my clothes and come down here, man. And you know, like, because now down here in South Carolina, it's like stores. When you go to them, all the fat people got the same clothes on. So you got oh, yeah. yeah, you know, all the fat people, you know, you, you, you might have on the 3X, somebody else have on the 4X. But it's like in New York, you get anything. Anything. And it would anything. be anything at that side. There was big right. people like myself. That's right. And, yeah, that I was like, yeah, I could get anything. So I think that, you know, when I think back on it and the younger people I talk to now, I mean, not that I have a problem with young people. I do your thing. Um, but I just feel like you've got as a comic, I, I, I studied the old older guys and I listened. You know who used to school me? They both passed away. There's a comic named Ronaldo Ray. I remember Ronaldo Ray. Yeah. Yeah. He used to school me because yeah. I was real aggressive when I got out to L.A. and I wanted to fight everybody. And, and it, was, it was something wrong with me. And I was about some dude was talking smack to me. And I was like, well, I'm going to knock him out. And um he said, look, man, I'm arguing with this cat for about an hour. And me and him are arguing back and forth, back and forth. Then I realized who is the dummy. And I walked <laughs> away. And I didn't get it till later. Like, I'm the dummy for letting this dude get under my skin. That's right. Absolutely. And, so, and I, from then on, every time I saw him, I, I was like, hey, man, you need to drop some wisdom on me every time. And John Witherspoon, uh, uh, but I love case, John Witherspoon was a funny, yes. funny, funny human being. Man, I, let alone forget comedy, just comedy, just as a person, just knowing him as a person. Oh, no, he 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 would tell me that if you make a hundred dollars, you're making seventy five dollars because that twenty five dollars you got to put away because you never know when this stuff is going. You know, things are gonna go bad. Right. So he would constantly tell me that. Dick Gregory told me that too. So I can't front. Dick Gregory would tell me. 
always put part of your money away. And I wasn't making enough to really, I, some of it, I had to pay all my bills. I was right. not in that position. Right. But when I got a little bit bigger checks, I would take like a, like $75 out of each one. And then I would put in my savings. And he said, don't touch it. That ain't yours. You don't even know about it no more. It, it don't exist. So he, he got me more disciplined with that. And that did help me. In fact, when this pandemic thing came up, when all the shows got canceled, luckily I had some money put away. Right. And I was, I, and I remembered, you know, if I would have, li I listened to Dick Gregory. I listened to a lot of the old school cats. I would look, look at, listen to them, watch them. Some of them, I drank a little too much. I would go, okay, I'm not going to do that because I, I know that some of them went down the wrong road by drinking so much and cocaine and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, don't get me wrong. I, I never did that, but that's on them. But I was like, I, I'll learn from that. Um, and I love, I, I, man, let me tell you something. I, I thought that uh, to me, sitting there watching Paul Mooney do an hour and a half and not miss a beat, man, as a comic, that's like school, man. I know that, and let me tell you something. I watched, I watched, I met Richard Pryor once, um, but he was really sick. He was in a wheelchair. Yeah, it was, it was sad. It was really sad. Uh, but sit there and watch D.L. Hughley riff off the crowd 30 minutes, not miss a beat. D.L. Hughley was crazy, man. You know who's got swag? Uh, uh, any person that, before we go, I know uh, some more. There's a comic, some more. I love some more, man. Yeah, what are you, you talking so about? Some more. Swag. If you watch Friday, you know some more, man. Some more, some more. Like, don't sleep on her. Um, I think some more is a beast. Like, um, there's a lot of comics that uh, I look and say, you know, don't sleep on them. They are really talented comics. And I'm never like, and I'm a headliner. I'm a flat out headliner. I can rock with anybody out there and they know it. Yeah. Some people know they don't even want to go back to me. But I always look at these comics in, in awe and respect. I think Earthquake is a, a monster. Earthquake. I think Earth, I've seen Earthquake flip rooms. I did this show for Comedy Central called Laugh of Palooza. Yeah. And it was uh, Jamie Foxx's Laugh of Palooza. And when I say Earthquake came out there and murdered, it was had to be uh, maybe 2,000 people in the audience. We're taping the show. Earthquake came out there from the first joke to the last joke, just absolutely destroying. And then I went up third. I was like, I was so glad I went up third because the guy that went up after him died to death. Not because he's not funny. It's just it was too much heat right. from earthquake. Does that make sense? From earthquake to yeah. follow. Earthquake already stole the show. He and then so by the and then after he bombed, earthquake came up. They had to reset the cameras, and then they put the second comic up. But earthquake couldn't do any time between because of the time you have to kind of get the right. show going. So I didn't have to follow him telling jokes because. When he brought me up, he's like, hey, this next cat, he light skin on the outside, but he dark on the inside. <laughs> put your hand together. No, that's what he introduced. And he said, put your hands together. He put me up. So I, I came up. I had a really good set. But I was just in awe. I did so many good comics. But some more, if anybody gets a chance, uh, watch some more on this. Uh, I think it's Queens. I think it's uh, Queens of Comedy. And she really had a good set. I, I don't think like Tiffany Haddish is real popular, but I still think Samora is is oh Samora is yeah Samora is off the chain. I I I love Samora. I like Haddish too, but Samora and Ricky Smiley is my boy too because I went oh to I love Ricky Smiley. Ricky Columbia, Smiley. Ricky Smiley, oh, nice. is so cool. Hilarious, bro. He he hosted when I did Comic View. He is a lot man. You guys used to be so funny on Comic View. I I always said I'll never come on Comic View and sit on that front seat. Because oh, I know. I oh, know. Boy. listen, I was I scared. I went to Ricky, times, um, yeah. but, but Ricky didn't get us bad. We didn't do that crazy. Ricky was cool. No, Ricky yeah, was, cool. was cool. I did. I did it. The show with him twice. Yeah. Um, and uh, Ricky Smiley always been super nice to me. You know, he's a headliner. Yeah. He was at more of a headliner when I was a, a feature. Uh, I was still featuring and he was already headlining. So it was. So I've always had guys that were headliners be nice to me when I was opening and featuring. So now that we're kind of both headlining, they know how long it took me to come up. And so it's really, I mean, Ricky was so super cool. That's a really cool dude. And then uh, Joe Torrey. Yeah, Joe Torrey. Uh, Joe Torrey, D.L. Hughley, always super nice to me, always 
you know, uh, Kevin Hart, again, these are guys that were before a lot of people, they were already kind of doing their thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, they always gave me respect, man. They always gave me respect. And, um, you know, even when I wasn't, I felt I wasn't on point for a while there. I didn't really mesh with Steve Harvey. He was just, he wasn't mean to me, but he was real rude to some other people. Yeah. And it made me look at him different. Right. Some people came up. I was doing the Apollo Comedy Hour, and he was the host. And it was like my third time doing it. And I come up there, and, and I was so lucky because the first time I, I thought they weren't going to bring me back because I right. cussed. I cussed. I slipped. Right. I cussed <laughs> because somebody went to heckle me because of my shoes. I had white on white Nikes. And somebody said, hey, look at that dude with the nurse shoes. And then I was Mama like. Mama got nurse shoes. <laughs> Yeah, and then you I was like, you were a New Yorker. <laughs> I I ripped him. I ripped him. I said, "You got to have your two front teeth for you talk to me, bro." And then I said something about his mama, uh, you know, it, really bad about her 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 bottom parts. Put it that way. And uh, I thought, and the crowd went crazy. Crowd went crazy. They loved it. But I thought, ooh, they ain't gonna they ain't gonna hear that. And I thought they wasn't gonna bring me back. So oh. I was excited. I was excited and I was wow. excited to meet Steve Harvey because he's like Steve Harvey to me. Yeah. Like, I'm like, oh, it's Steve Harvey. And yeah. he was he was cool. He was calm and cool when he talked to me. Yeah. But some people came up to talk to him. Yeah. Um, a husband and wife. Yeah. And they said, hey, we're fans of yours. Can we have your autograph? And he turned his back on him. But he didn't walk away. Right. He just turned his back on him and didn't say nothing. So they go. Then the guy walks around to his face again and says, hey, man, we're really big fans. We really love you. We love the Steve Harvey show. Could you sign this for my wife? Now, his wife is standing there. Then Steve Harvey does it again, turns back around and puts his back to dude. Wow. Now, I'm standing there looking at this going, yeah. that is, why are you doing that? And then yeah, the, dude, the dude got mad. Yeah. yeah, the dude got mad. It's like, yo, you ain't going to disrespect me in front of my wife. You could tell he was a hard knock Harlem cat. Right, right. And, and you ain't gonna do that. And then uh, Steve Harvey's security looks like um, Thanos. They built him in a lab. He was gigantic, and he came and moved the dude away. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm like, wait, how many more crystals do you got to get before you kill everybody? And I, I, he's scary, scary looking individual. Yeah, man. I was like, and but and after that, even though he didn't do that to me, I looked at him like, why would you do that to to your fans? And then what my friends was like, yo, we should wait after the show and beat him up. <laughs> I'm being serious. I had hey, the New Yorkers don't care who you are. Yeah. I don't they, care. They'll respect you and, and because of you know what you do, they'll love you. But I don't care who you are, you can still get the business. Yeah, oh no, they was like, yo, wait till he come out. This is <laughs> I'm gonna tell you, they said, yo, we're gonna wait. I'm gonna keep I'm gonna do an impression. Yo, we're gonna wait for him to come outside. We're gonna stomp him out. I'm like, dude, I can't. Let me get my check first. It's like, nah, man, that was mad disrespectful. He need to get he need to get these hands, son. And so I'm telling my friends because I invited my friends because I was so excited to do the Apollo. Like for me, that's big. That's even though I was getting five hundred dollars. Right. I was still like, this is amazing. Yeah. And, and they was like, because I brought them backstage because I was like, can I bring some of my friends backstage? Right. So they're backstage plotting on stomping out Steve Harvey. <laughs> About to mess you up, man. And I'm like, let, <laughs> first off, let me get my check. Because I need this check. Because I, I remember I was two months back on rent and it wasn't wow. even close. My rent was my rent was uh, $1,100. And I, I was I had maybe $200. And I was like, I'm doing this Apollo, not because I'm excited to do it as much as, man, I need this $500. <laughs> and, uh, and so I was I had to tell him, look, man, let me just get this together, man. Just wait for me outside. Right. Um, and so because after you do your set, you have to take pictures in the back. You have, you know, and I was still excited about my set because I had a good set. So I was, you know, because you it's nerve wracking because you think if they boo me, oh, that'd be horrible. So I was excited. I came back. I had a really good set. I come backstage. They take the pictures and my friends are creeping up on Steve. <laughs> I stopped. I didn't. In fact, I wasn't in one of the pictures because I left and went over and said, hey, dude, hey, man, look. And they're like, nah, he got to get it, man. You could tell he, man, the heck with his suit. And they started saying, I hate his suit. I hate his hair. They started really hating on him. 
And I said, no, that was mad. Not cool what he did, but we ain't going to jump him. We going to jump him, man. You in know? front of the owner producer over here. We ain't going to yeah, do that. Thanos is over there. Yeah, and, and then, and no, the security, <laughs> no, he really was the biggest dude I've ever, no, he's not the biggest dude because the, the security for Beyonce is the biggest human being I've ever seen. Wow. Other than The Rock. I met The Rock at the airport. Yeah. And he don't, his arm is your leg. And I'm not kidding you. I met Dwayne Johnson, super nice. Um, his he's just a tank. He just looks like a if a person was a tank. And my friend was like, "Why don't he got security?" I'm like, "Who gonna run up on this dude? He's six five. What? He don't who? The Rock is his own security man. It was so crazy, man. And we had to get out of there. We got out there, Apollo. And then I remember we went to this place called uh, Around the Clock to get something to eat. And we went to get something to eat. And 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 it was like, yeah, but we're going to see him eventually. I'm like, why are y'all still wanting to stomp out Steve Harvey? And I thought, I mean, I if I ever got to meet him again, because I've never seen him since. If right. I ever got to meet him again, because he was super nice to me. He was nice right. to me. He was cordial to me. Right. But I just felt like you're not a good person if you treat your fans like just dog crap. What are you doing? Does that make sense? What I'm saying it's like yeah, it's nice to be important, but it's important to be nice. Yeah, he could have just shook their hand and yeah, they signed the picture and and it would have took him what a, a second. Second, yeah. Just you know, I I just I don't I met some celebrities, man, where I just look at them and go why why I understand you you might get people bothering you and stuff like that. But don't go out your way to be mean to people. Just, you know, I've had people, my ex-wife, I'm sitting there because she got tired of me, tired of me, I guess, being on the road, yeah. um, you know, and uh, we're sitting there eating dinner and people want to come up and talk to you. And she used to hate that. Whereas I, I would handle it like, hey, it's cool, man. And then I would, would talk to him for a second and they right. go, hey, I'm going to finish my meal. But thank you so much. And I, I appreciate you. I always say that. Yeah, and, I wouldn't and, bother you if I saw you eat. If I saw you eating, I'm not gonna bother. Oh no, no. But, you know, if I saw you outside now, then no, I'm like, outside you're supposed to say what's up. Yeah, yeah. I, I yeah. talk to everybody. What's up? Yeah. But no, yeah. And then I remember she because we were trying to, you know, um, have dinner, and she was like, you know, I didn't sign up for this, oh, and I was like, yes, you did. You yeah. know, I would. Yes, you did. You knew what I did. Stop it. And uh, yeah, that's why we ain't together no more. <laughs> uh, I had two relationships with it. So, so this is what you're gonna do. You're gonna so you're gonna be gone for how long? Where are you going? So you get to go. You get to go to Nassau, Bahamas, and do shows. And I'm supposed to sit here at home. I'm like, well, you can't leave because you got a job. Unless you, <laughs> if you quit your job, you can go. Start telling these jokes too. Start yeah. writing these jokes. <laughs> now, yeah, she, she didn't get it. My ex did not get it. She was. She was. She just felt like. She felt like, well, I want a man that comes home at three in the afternoon. And uh, I said, well, that's not me, really. If I got something to do or if I'm or it, the problem I had was when the other sister I was with, she would get off work at around five, get home at six. And at six, I'm getting dressed to go to go because the show's at seven thirty, eight o'clock. Right. So our, it wasn't like we was not. We were always going like this. You know, I you know, and when she, when she get up in the morning, I was sleep, and I would take our son, I would take the son, my son to school, and her son to school, and then I'd come back home and go back to sleep until around ten, and then I get up, make my calls, and do my promos, uh, and it just we never, it was always like this. I was always you know, and then I could tell she'd get mad like, so where are you going next? So. Oh, so you're going to be in Atlanta, huh? Ugh, you ain't complaining about that car I bought you. Absolutely. The dividends that's coming with it. But you can marry Jerry that work at the plant. He'll be home in the afternoon every day. But, I mean, if they can't support your vision, they can't support your dream, you can't stop who being who you are because that's who you yeah, are. Right. You know what? You know what? It was funny. My Well, he's not here no more either. My, my uncle told me that. And uh, I just didn't listen. I was like, she got a big booty. I got a. Wait, hey, what uh, what, what Belle Bill DeVoe say? That was yeah. a big butt spot. <laughs> no, was that? Yeah, it was. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, poison. That was a song. Yeah. 
poison. Yeah, poison. Yeah, it's like, it's like, yeah, man. I don't know if we getting along, but man, she got big booty. So uh, I'm gonna think I'm gonna hang in there for a while. I'm just hanging in with this big booty for a while. But no, yeah, oh. man. So see, yo, this was the in depth interview. Hey. Man, listen, listen, you done gave me, you done gave me some good stuff, brother. I uh, I appreciate you so much, man. Hey, uh, I'm gonna ask you just one question that I ask everybody. Um, on your journey, man, uh, what would you say is your truth, your personal truth? My personal truth? Yeah. Um, wow, that's a heavy question. Um, my personal truth is knowing I can forgive myself and forgive others. Um, but I have to forgive myself first. I know, I don't know how that sounds, but, and I have, it, that's my truth that I'm still working on. Cause I have a hard time forgiving myself and I do have a hard time, like forgiving others sometimes. So, but the truth is you got to, you got to kind of forgive yourself for stuff. Um, stuff I didn't do right. Or, what my 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 main my, my main problem as a man i think and my main problem is um sometimes i focus on stuff so much i forget the stuff that's important and now i've got it and it took me a long time to get it or i think that you know i, I was i'd focus on my sons and focus on my career and doing show after show after show and i would never take a break and i would burn myself out and then I didn't wasn't even living, you know, I was like, but I was gigging. I was making money, but I had no life. You know what I'm saying? Right. And now I, my truth now is, this, you know, step back, forgive yourself. You're allowed to sit there. And like I, my other day, I was like, you know what? I want some strawberry shortcake. That's and right. I, and I would beat myself up before. But now I'm like, you know what? I'm going to sit here. I'm going to watch. I watch. I remember I did it. I watched. Uh, it was Jurassic Park. I watched the Jurassic Park something the second or third one where the dinosaur came to the city and was killing people. It was crazy. Oh yeah, yeah. I forget which one it was, but it was good. It was Jeff Goldblum. It was good. It was really good. It was really really good. And um, I was like, you know what? I ain't never watched this movie. I'm gonna sit down. I'm cutting the phone off. I'm not gonna answer no promos. I'm not gonna answer nothing on Facebook or none of the Twitter, none of that. And I'm gonna sit down and eat me some strawberry shortcake and I'm gonna watch this movie. My son right. was over at his mom's. I'm like, you know what? That's what I'm going to do. That's I would right. never do that before. You've got to have some me time. Yeah, you're so right. And I, I screwed up. I'm in my late 50s, and it, I'm, I, it took me this long to get it. Is that crazy? It, no. took me, it's, it took me this long to go, you know what? You're allowed to not, you know, <laughs> you're allowed to not be able to be at every meeting. Yeah. You know? Uh, even when my son was acting up one time, I was like, look, I'm allowed to not, you know, deal with this right now. That's right. You, you're going to act right. And I'll be over here when you decide to act right. Holler at me. That's right. And then, then I see him come out the room. Yo, dad. Uh, hey, man. <laughs> but but before I be, you know, I, now I just go, look, I'm, I learned from a very brilliant brother named Zoe Williams. He got a radio show and he said, sometimes you got to be a mountain. You got to just be there, be strong, stand, and, you know, not go to everybody. Sometimes they got to come to you, and sometimes you got to take a break. And you said it perfectly. You got to have me time. Have and yeah, I don't understand why it took me 56, 50, like 55, 56 is when I kind of got that. That's crazy. I mean, do you do that sometime where you just say, oh, I'm yeah. going to sit down and watch a movie. I don't care what nobody think. I don't want to talk to nobody. I don't want to do nothing. Well, absolutely. You, you have to, 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 to maintain your sanity. Because you'll be yeah. wow, that's a good wheels. Way. You'll be running in circles, man, trying to do everything and can't get anything. Sometimes you just have to sit back and take a look, a panoramic view of, of everything in front of you, and then stop. And you can come back the next day and you'll be fresh. You'll be able to handle it. Okay. Oh, I mean, I'm learning because I, I've been watching um, Instagram, not uh, YouTube videos on it, and uh, I've been reading books on it. There's one called Four Corners, and there's different stuff where I like just you know, 
because I, I, I never made it to the level of the Kevin Hart's and whatever else. But I was doing pretty good and I was getting a lot of work and I never kind of stopped to breathe sometimes. And I didn't realize I was burning myself out and I and that I burned myself out. And then what you just said, that sometimes you have to step back. What did you, what did you say? You got to step back you step and, back and take a panoramic view. You got to look at it and right. after you step back and you look at it, you can assess it a little bit better and you can come and tap the problem a different way. Yeah, I, yeah, that's a uh, that's been hard for me. So I'm I'm working on it. I ain't, I ain't got it down completely yet, but, but you almost got it, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. So that would be a truth that I have to embrace fully. You know, because you know I'm a, I got uh, all this gray. I got all this gray coming in. Oh yeah, I see. Yeah, no, mine is no, mine is coming in heavy. This is right here. I and and I, if I grew this out, that'd be all gray. But I, 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 I was I had a beard. I, I shaved it off. And then because uh, for this one show, because the lady didn't like my beard. I was like, really? But then they said, hey, we're going to give you fifteen hundred dollars if you do it. I'm like, you know I what? I just yeah. screw this beard. What is this I don't like it either. <laughs> you know what? You right. This beard is horrible. <laughs> like I shaved that off. It was so funny. I literally went. I said, you got a razor? <laughs> and, I, and she's like. No, I said, is there a drugstore near here? I went <laughs> and I did a, a just like with soap and water, not even with shaving cream. I just said, look, because I usually use a, a electric razor. Right. And I was like, I was like, look, you can get this all off. Fifteen hundred she gave me, yeah, it was fifteen hundred dollars. Man. Fifteen hundred, <laughs> I shaved that off. So I mean, I just uh, I like even stuff like that. Uh it's like now I'm not as like, well, no, this, no, women is beard. Shut up, lady. <laughs> now I'm like, you know what? Ain't that deep. Does that make sense? Where you go? It, right. it makes a lot of sense, bro. You are a very wise man, Grasshopper. Thank you, sir. I'm You're still very working. Wise. Very wise man. Man, I, I appreciate you taking time, man, out your business. Appreciate it, man. All righty, man. Coming out here, hanging out with us in South Carolina. I can say I got my cousin Shang. I'll be like, I tell people, yes. don't. Yes. Well, maybe call my cousin Shang now. Yeah, you know karate. he know that he know that stuff. We he... <laughs> he can talk I, karate. Yeah, can I talk. can talk karate. No, now, yeah, no, I I don't even know how far I can lift. Before I could lift my leg up to my head, like I literally could put my leg up uh, to eye level. Now, not at all. <laughs> now it's like I will. You know what? I'll sit here and I will call the police. That's right. Hey, I can. Long as this finger is fine, right? You, a you dollar finger is fine. And well, no, yeah, no, I, I don't like. I try my best to avoid conflict. I was at one of the um, rallies, and the cop were beating on people and hitting them with those shields. Uh, a Black Lives Matter rallies up. They had one up in Hollywood, and it was crazy. Got out of hand. A bunch of cops. You know, one girl they um, shot her with the uh, rubber bullets. You know, the rubber bu the rubber bullets. Yeah. And uh, now she, she came in the eye. So it was really crazy. And it was weird. Uh, before, I would have been jumped right in the middle. Like, hey, y'all yeah. getting hands. Everybody getting hands. Yeah. Cop came up to me with the shield. I just looked at him and said, hey, man, your world. That's right. And he went around me. Yeah. And then the other two cops went around me. I said, hey, man, whatever, man. I figured my attitude was like, I ain't gonna touch them. That's right. Don't touch me. The younger me, it'd have been like oh, talking trash. <laughs> Shut up, you pig! Pig cop! Oh, cop pig! Look at you, you, you little old oh, old oh, pigmently challenged cracker 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 pig cop pig. I, the younger me, like yeah, do some pig. If you didn't have that badge, I'd beat your. <laughs> do it, cop. But now I'm like, you know what? I want to get home and eat some strawberry shortcake. What? <laughs> I want some strawberry shortcake. I still got to watch Blade. I want to see the other Blade. I want to see that movie. I, I I I watched part of it and I was like, yeah. this movie's off the chain. Yeah. I can't do that if I'm in the prison. So, different dude now. And out to the people. Yeah. yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> I still, I still will. I still speak up for our people. Oh, absolutely. 
But I understand uh, what you said, but I, I'm too old. Now let the young people jump in there and get all beat up. Yeah, you I'm too old to be jumping on because I literally would have jumped on those cops. Yeah. But now I'm like, I am too old for this now. I was it Danny Glover? What was that movie? Um he was on with Mel Gibson. Yeah, um, I know what you're talking about. Oh, there was four of them. I know um, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, but yeah, that one. That one. Yeah, that one right yeah, there. I, know what you're I am too old for this. Yeah, that's, that's right. Where I'm at now. <laughs> I'm just... well, Brother Shang, um, yes. you can, I, everybody can reach out to www.iamshang.com. Right, you sign up. Yeah, go sign up. Sign up for him. Sign up for his page on YouTube. Um, we just so thankful you came here with us today, man. Thank you, and, man. Man, we gonna have you back, and you and me gonna stay oh, in I touch, it, brother. Man. I appreciate and it. We gonna stay in touch, man. And anytime you yeah. want to come back, you let me know. You said okay, it no, for sure. You got and you. I give you. I'm, hey, I'm gonna inbox you in my direct because I got a couple promo shows coming up, and I got some other stuff. But I'm gonna tell you right now. Yes, I'm very much so. I, I'm. I appreciate you even having me on here. Um, so much better than Moon Dog. Jesus Christ. That was such a horrible interview. And the dude in Africa, I didn't understand half the stuff he was saying. So you did it, Joseph. I'm like, what? We watch you on HBO. And what? The whole show was me going, what? What? It should have been called Live from Africa. What? And Lil John was home somewhere saying, I know what? exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the whole time I was in there going, he's like, so we, we watch you on this, uh, the Comedy Central. The Comedy Central. What do you think? Uh, uh, can you repeat that? Okay. It was so, and that sounds so stereotypical, but I really couldn't understand half the stuff they said. <laughs> I just did it. I just did it. And I got one set up. I got one set up for the 23rd or 20. No, the 21st. I'm doing uh, one because a lot of the stuff is online. So I'm doing the overseas. But you got to get up at like three in the morning. So you get up at three in the morning because it's the time thing. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, man, it's weird. I got one the 21st and the 21st and the 23rd. I got to get up three in the morning and do the interview. And then uh, I'm promoting my uh, special for Amazon, which is dropping on the 18th okay on right. amazon prime um and uh it's a special i did before that was they were going to release and then i had contracts disputes and now it's getting released so it's a uh, it's a uh, it's called shangri 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 right. shangri shangri live in new york um and i'm one of the producers on it and it will be coming out february 18th so if you got amazon prime anybody and now I'm warning you ahead of time. There's some dicey language on the show. <laughs> Just so you know ahead of time. All you churchgoers. Uh, I see I didn't do that on the show here. But if you watch the show, I don't talk about there's some stuff I said really bad about the president. Don't bring your kids. Yes. yes because <laughs> I did say something bad about uh, the orange the orange man that was in charge. Yes, I did. So don't, don't, because I have to give, uh, I have to let people know that because some people, they don't realize that, uh, you know, my live show, I have my eight o'clock show is usually clean. My 10 and 12 o'clock show is not clean. And my Sunday shows, I go clean. But guess what? Not on my Saturday show. So y'all grown ups, you were told. You were told you've been you've been warned. Yeah, yeah, I know you have to do that. <laughs> you've, been, you've been warned. One man, he wanted revenge. You've been warned. Yeah. So Jason Bourne. Yeah. So no, I I I just letting people know February eighteenth. Make sure to check out. But more importantly, sign up on the website if you get a chance. Now, is this live? Where are we at right now? We're live, man. We're actually on Facebook. We're on um, uh, Tumblr. Um, Excellent. we're on uh, Periscope, and um, Excellent. we're gonna be on. Actually, um, I'm gonna take it out and I'm gonna put it on like uh, 20 other um platforms, just audio. Excellent. 
All right. And I'll, let, me know you, uh, let me know if you need me to promote it on some of my social media. I got you. Man, thank you, brother. I appreciate you, man. I'm, I'm going to tag right. you with it. I'm going to tag you with it so you can have it, man. But once again, we give it up for HBO, uh, Netflix. Uh, yes. Uh, the great comedic genius of yes. Bang. Yeah. Oh, no, I didn't mean to hit that one. <laughs> man, thank you for joining us, brother. Yo, you it's you man. Today, you made man. me feel comfortable, man. I'm, I, I did so many stiff ones last week, and it, it was feel good to talk like I, you know, talk the real. It was so. I mean, I, the one publicist out that's working with me and setting up stuff, I don't mind, but god damn, they were stiff, man. <laughs> you know, or I was talking to some cat. I'm going, you're 22. You're not going to understand half the shit I'm saying. What? Like, literally, it was like I had to go, oh, I can't say that. Oh, they don't know. But not language wise, but just topic wise. Right. I was like talking to you. You went, oh, no, I know that. I went, oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Same stomping ground, man. We could have we could have went a little deep and yeah, said, yeah, no, but it's about a slice, Carvel, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah, hey, yeah. Hey, hey. See, so Look, you knew. Great adventures. Yeah, exactly. So it was Roy just, Rogers. <laughs> if I say uh, like I say some of the stuff I was saying that uh, they wouldn't have known, but I think that you know even when you said it, music and everything else, I was on some music show. I don't know what they had me on a music show for, but I was on a music show. They had me on a music show. And they asked me about different music, and I was naming stuff like you know Luther Vandross, yeah, and Earth, Wind, and Fire, because I'm going by you know what right. I. And when I say they did they, they Earth on the Fire, what what is Earth? Is that a band? Wow, is that a band? And I and I said in the middle of the show, I said, look, we ain't gonna do this. Look, pull it up right now. And I made them pull up and they pulled it and they were like, Oh, that I love that. I'm like, exactly. They knew they knew the song. But they didn't know who it was attributed to. No, it was Earth on the Fire. And then there was a, another song called uh Brothers Johnson, which I love this song. Yeah, the Brothers Johnson. Strawberry Johnson's. Letter 23. Yeah. And uh, again, I, they were like, so what is some of the stuff you listen to? Because that's what the music shows are. They'll ask you right. favorite groups and favorite singers and stuff like that. And I was telling them, well, one of my number one is Prince. They knew Prince. Everything well, I said Prince. Everybody knew Prince. Michael Jackson. Right. The, the, right. Yeah. But when I said Prince, they were like, oh, and I was like, yeah, I think he's just a genius to me. He's. He was he was one of the best guitar players I've ever seen. And uh, he just killed it every time on the Super Bowl. He killed it. So when I said Brothers Johnson, they were like, who? I, every We're on the show. And I would say, OK, pull it because they you, they could pull vi video into the right. as a pull up. Brothers Johnson, let it, they pulled it up, and they, as soon as they heard the, do, 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 oh, I know this song. I love it because it was these two girls. Right, the one girl was just absolutely knocked down, gorgeous, and the other one was this dark skin, short hair, beautiful sister. And but they were just like one was twenty four, one was twenty eight, and it was just like I was in another world. And they were like, "So what do you think?" And they start naming singers. I go, "Well, yeah, but you kind of they're kind of biting off." I was saying they kind of biting off this singer, and you know that's really right. Right, the Evelyn, way, man. yeah, right. yeah. I said there was a singer named Peebo Bryson that sang the song much better. Oh, if you say Peebo Bryson, or if you say Teddy Pendergrass, I think I better let it go. They'd be like, Who's Teddy Pendergrass? Oh, yeah, oh my god, dude, who's Teddy? Teddy? Pendergrass. Oh, who's Teddy Pendergrass? It's such weird. And and but the publicist is like, Well, you got to get that audience too. Uh, and she's like, We got to get you in that audience too. So and because um, I don't have a manager, I in fact I might just start working with this one guy. I haven't had a manager the whole time. Wow. I've been like a lot of the shows they book me on directly. So, like they hit me up and go, "Hey, you want to do the show?" I go, "Yeah." I got Def Jam because I saw Russell Simmons out somewhere. It, it, like he saw me and said, "Hey man, why didn't you did my show?" I said, "You tell me." I tried to get on the show. He said, "Well, just call me." And I, I called him, and a week later he said, "This is the date you're taping." No manager, no nothing. So that's right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I'm working with this one publicist gonna promote the stuff. 
and then another person. So this is all new to me because I'm usually used to handling the stuff myself. And um, yeah, they trying to they get me on all these shows, and I um, I guess it's a different demographic, but they want me to kind of be in front of them. And they're like, "You got to start a TikTok." I'm like, "Yeah, okay, I got it. Start a TikTok." So I'm gonna do that and start posting on that and stuff. But I I don't know. It, and she said, "No, that you no, know, we tested you with some young audience. They like you, so you gotta you gotta do the young people shows." I'm like. There's one called something Hollywood I got to do. And I watched a couple of them before I got to do it. Like, ugh. it's like, so what did you think of Jada and Will? That was <laughs> what? That's the question. What you Jada? Wear the skinny jeans when you do the show? Huh? You can wear some skinny jeans when you do the show? Probably going to have to. <laughs> Trust me, I can't wear no skinny jeans. I can't wear no skinny jeans. Skinny jeans will end up being torn jeans. I really will look like the Hulk. I can't wear those. So I'm gonna do them. I'm gonna do them. I mean, she said that uh, you know they got a lot of followers. So yeah, the one person, this little model girl that talks to them and they ask you about your sex life. And I, I turned that one down. I said, I don't want to talk about that. Yeah, yeah, that's personal. Yeah, I don't want to, like, that's for me. That ain't for you. Yeah. That's not um, for and then uh, they sent me some, well, let's just look at the questions. One of the first questions is um, yeah, about being, you know, because me and the mother of my child aren't together. I wanted to right. talk about that. I went, what? That's the first question? So what made you guys break up? What? That's, that's not their business. But that's no, really, no, really but that's what they want to do. That's no. the young, the young audience wants to know all that stuff. And I just said, no, I'm not, I turned that one down, but I did take the one. There's another one music where it's like a top 10. They ask you your top 10 that the whole show is based on your top 10 music. Right. And uh, so I'm going to do that one. And then there's another one called um, Inside the Comics Mind, which is looks pretty good. But I don't like the interviewer. He's kind of he's kind of goofy. It's real clean cut. He looked like the dude uh, on American Idol. My guy with you know, real spiky hair. Just a corny look. He looks like an asshole. But <laughs> but you know it's a, it's you know twenty minutes. Um, I just you know twenty minutes. I got to do that. Uh, and then I got the ones in Africa, the twenty first, the twenty third. And then I got another one that she said she's gonna set me up with. Oh, but the good one I'm gonna do. I'm get. I found. I got this one. J. Anthony Brown. Oh, J. Anthony Brown, man. Yes. I love J. Anthony Brown. Yes. Uh, they said I'm. I'm gonna be. Uh, I'm gonna. Uh, I was. I'm very excited about that one because he. Un he'll get me. You know. I think he'll. He'll understand me. J. Anthony Brown. Um, is starting his own show. Man, J. Anthony Brown is hilarious, man. I think so too. So. Him and George um, Walsh used to go back and forth all the oh time. My goodness. Oh my about goodness! Mama, Miss Butterbean Brown, and he told. I think he told. I think he was the one that told George Wallace, uh, "Tell his mama don't wear no orange dress because people be coming up to her thinking that she's Home Depot." Yes. <laughs> yeah. So I'm doing his show. I'm doing his show. Um, next week, I'm doing Janthy Brown shows next hey. week. Uh, he is hilarious. He's hilarious. Oh, it's gonna be that. I I think that. And plus, I you know I met him multiple times, and he's so yeah. nice to me. He's the OG in the biz, and you know always give me advice and stuff. And so I I'm looking forward to that one. And then uh, another comic named Dean Edwards from Saturday Night Live. Um, he's okay. going to. So uh, it's called uh, uh, the Real Deal, and it's the it's real deal, and it's Dean Edwards, and they ask you. Uh, basically, you know the questions ahead of time. It's what was your best show? What was your worst show? What's your best club? What's your worst club? What's the best city to work in? What's the worst city to work in? And so I already know the questions because right, they, right. they send them to you. They send them to right. you. And then he said that we'll just work around that. So I'm like, those sound fun. The other ones, I don't think, I don't know. <laughs> you have to be someplace else. Like, Usa. <laughs> then who saw we got to do that. <laughs> yeah but i mean uh, you know katina was like 
you know what? They got a big following. The one girl got a million followers. And, wow. she, you know, I said, yeah, but she talks about dumb stuff. It's just a whole bunch of dumb shit that <laughs> and personal stuff. I was like, is that what sells? Is that what's selling? <laughs> yeah, they want to know what kind of girls you like and stuff like that. I'm like, I don't like girls. I like grown ass women. I don't. <laughs> what what are we going to talk? How are we going to even? She said, look, you're going to do it because it's a million people. She has a million. And even if a little bit of them like you, we're going to do it. And I was like, all right. I guess so. And that's, and that's when you know you're not gangster no more when, 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 when they talk to you like that, right? Yeah. Before, they don't even, you know, the menacing black man is, is, is not is, that is work, no but more. I'd have been like, yo, get out my face. I ain't doing it. Now, <laughs> Let me call my friends that was going to beat up Steve. Yeah, they like yo, bro, he, he to do, he to stomp her out. Yo, know, he said the most diabolical thing. He said they was gonna uh, curb him. You know what curbing somebody is? No, what's curbing somebody? When you put their mouth on the curb and make them open their mouth and put it on the curb and you stomp the back of their head. Ooh, ooh, they rough. And I, oh man, the one dude, um, I, I got in an argument with him. This is right before the pandemic. I was doing a show. He yeah. came out to the show and he was reaching over the bar, stealing drinks. I'm like, dude, <laughs> stop doing dumb shit. And so he's like, yo, man, this ain't your bar. I'm like, yo, I invited you here, man. Quit acting goofy. Let and me then, go ahead and end the show so we can talk. Oh, we ain't on the show still, are we? We are. Oh, you didn't know we was live still. Let me get off. Let me 